Hello and welcome to UK Health Radio. My name is Dora Walsh and I'm a nutritionist and I've been working in the field of natural and functional medicine for over 15 years. I help people to reverse chronic health conditions like autoimmune conditions, low energy, skin problems, digestive problems and more. Well, this week, I'm going to be talking to an amazing guest on my show and we're going to be talking about cancer recovery and survival. Now, maybe you have somebody in your family that is experiencing this terrible disease or you're concerned about your own future or maybe you think it runs in your family or maybe you're in this position yourself. It's a scary place to be in. One in three people get diagnosed with cancer in the UK. But there are so many things we can do to support our health and many chronic diseases, as well as cancer, are caused by lifestyle and stress. It's important that we be the healthiest we can, that we invest in our health, that we invest in our relaxation, that we support ourselves as much as we can in order to protect ourselves from developing these chronic diseases. I have an amazing guest on my show this week. It's Craig Driver, and he is the founder of Iconic Pure Water. The website for his company is water-purification.systems. So water-purification.systems. And he is a survivor of cancer. He managed to recover from the disease. Welcome to the show, Craig. Hello there. Good to be on. I found out about you simply because I was trying to find a, a company that could help me to know more about the best type of water. And I came across your company, Iconic Pure Water. But then when we got chatting on the phone and you were telling me about the water systems, I realized that you had your own story to tell of how to recover, of experiencing cancer, of going through the, that journey. And that you actually had done so much work on yourself to actually recapture your health. Can you tell us more about your story of cancer, how you were covered and how you're still surviving today? Yeah, well, I was diagnosed over 10 years ago with bowel cancer at the age of 42. And shockingly, it had gone through my bowel wall into my lymph nodes. So things were looking a little bit grim in them days. Quickly I had surgery. And um, and then there was a rewatch re- recovery. But previous to being diagnosed, I was I was very ill. I wasn't functioning properly. I was very weak. I lost a lot of weight. And not knowing to myself and my family, when you deteriorate slowly over years, you don't really see see somebody getting ill because it's very it was a very slow process. Maybe over two, three, four, five years. I don't know. I, I had surgery. Went on to recover. Got a bad infection in, in the cut, which took about three to four months to heal. Then I started chemotherapy, which I was at a crossroads and I know it wasn't the right thing to do personally for myself, but for the, for the family and my three girls at home, it was, you're at the crossroads and you think, I'm going to have to do it because if I don't have the chemotherapy and then I die, then I'm not going to, I'm, I would have failed my family really. So luckily for me, I had three days of chemotherapy and my heart didn't like it. It made my heart spasm, which mimicked an heart attack. Breathing in my heart and the chemo ended. And I'm here, 10 years on there after that fright and the scare of what had gone on with the cancer. So I knew I had to change the way I was living, change the way... I was eating, drinking, business stress, etc. And the journey started. And the first thing was, was filtered water, which I bought a filter water system from a company that I got advice from. And shortly after that, it was down to the food and de-stressing, getting shut of business stress and just changed my whole outlook on life. And yeah, just, just moving forward from, from everything that I used to do to my new life and changing everything I have to do to survive. And shortly after getting the water filter, about 12 months later, I set up my own water filter business and called back on it Pure Water. Just gone from, from strength to strength there. Changed my diet from just eating anything to eating twice a day, fasting as long as I can at night into the next day. And my energy levels now were through the roof. 
I'm back to good health, good weight, and I'm enjoying life. It sounds like you weren't in the health business yourself. You were doing something else. You became unwell over a number of years. Then you got the cancer diagnosis. You got the bowel cancer. You had the surgery. You went into chemo thinking this is the treatment I'm meant to have. And then we're not making any judgment on that for anyone or advising anyone not to follow what their doctors say. But you thought that was the right thing for you at the time. But then you didn't have a good experience of it. So is that what woke you up to thinking, I have to try something else? Yeah, I didn't know anything really. I knew the chemotherapy was not good for my body. I felt it after the first 24 hours. I wasn't in a good place with it. Three days into the chemotherapy, I was climbing the walls. I was really off balance with it all. And I was in why put me in testicle. And then I knew I had to do something very quickly to change around. When I couldn't have chemotherapy, I knew I had to start doing my research. How did you start with water? What made you start there? The water is the, is the start of anybody's health. If you want to get well, your water is, is the first point of call of any health. You've got to be hydrated with good clean water. And then the other things follow down to your diet, down to the foods, understanding food more, protecting yourself for EMFs, 3G, 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, in your own home and your own office space, just reducing your body to all the elements that is thrown at us on a, on a daily basis. So it's, it's been a long journey. It's 10 years of learning. The first two or three, it took two or three years really to understand what's going on around you down to food, down to stress, understanding how the body works, how it responds to the EMFs or stress or food. And it's, it's very difficult for anybody, no, no matter what industry you're from, maybe even if you're from the health industry, to understand everything that has an impact on your health is where I, I knew I had to change everything. You had that big wake-up call. And you started with the water, you went on with your diet, you went on to your relaxation. What is it that you learned about water on this journey to health? So if your you... body's not hydrated, then it, it's not going to work properly. It's not going to absorb all the nutrients you put in, into your body, your food. It's, hydration is the first start of anybody's health, isn't it, in height? And that, that was the key in understanding that I need to get enough water in my body to help everything else that I do, whether it's... The, the intake of food or everything around me. So hydration would work paramount and key for me to start pushing toxins out of my body and getting, get, getting my body to an hydration where I can absorb every goodness, every nutrient I put into my body, trying to heal my gut after surgery. And I mean, I mean, I'm not the best ever out for my life, probably for 30 odd years which is at, at 52 and 53 is, uh, is quite an achievement, really. And I'm feeling great, full of energy. I feel on top of the world every single day. I wake up, no problem, get to work, and I'm still got plenty of energy at night time, so I'm doing something right. How much water should somebody drink a day, and what kind of water should they be drinking in your experience from your own health journey? Rule, rule of thumb for our water is 13, 13 milliliter for every one kilo of body weight, roughly. Obviously, if you're exerting yourself and sweating more through exercise, then obviously you would, you know, obviously take more water. But for yourself, if you, if you're tuning in with your body, you work when, when you want to drink, not when you need more water. And then with the world's filter systems, we can, we can talk all day long about how to, how to filter water, but I believe get a system that takes everything out of the water, everything. And then put the gunners back in through trace minerals or electrolytes and structure the water. And that is what I've learned. So if you if your water structured, bioavailable, you're better to absorb it far greater than if it's not structured. And on the water side, I believe we should be taking everything out of the water. Now I understand people say that's um, dead or flat water which it is, but what we're doing is taking everything out, putting a good source of trace minerals and electrolytes back into the water and using a product to structure the water, which there's, there's numerous ones out there, but I use a particular one which I also sell, and then that structures the water for your body to absorb it better than if it's not. And when you say structured water, 
What do you mean by that? Most water of today is full of chemicals and it's just it's just chaotic. It's not structured because of it goes through through treatment. It's it's just full of chemicals. And when we are when we, we are drinking it, we just we don't know what we're drinking, do we? We don't know what we're drinking out of the tap water, we don't know what we're drinking out of bottled water, what we buy from the supermarket. So when water is structured, water is more balanced and it, it's what nature intended water to be. So when we filter the water and put the gums back in, we structure the water, that is really as good as you're going to get on, the, on this planet. As, and then your body will take that good clean water with all the trace minerals and electrolytes in, structured, your body will absorb that fully as it's intended to do, and you're going to be, you'll get hydrated far quicker with structured water than without. That was the first part of your journey. You got your, your water filter, well, your water purification system, you call it, because you're not keen on filtration. You, you do something else. Can you explain a bit about the difference between this kind of reverse osmosis and actually filtering water? My, my thoughts are is get everything out there, filters out there where you put the water in at the top and it, it got, it's gravity fed through all different types of media to take all the nasties out. But you still don't know what is at the end of that journey the water's dabbed through that filtration. You still don't know what's in it, what's it picked up, what contaminants are still in there, unless you spend a lot of money to test the water. But the way with the reverse osmosis, you are guaranteed it 99.9 and 98, 99.9 whatever percentage it has taken nearly every single nasty out out of the water as well as I know it takes some goodness scent as well but that's where once we take everything out we choose what goodness we're putting back into the water if it resonates with you good good trace minerals good electrolytes adding that back into the water structuring the water is really good as you're going to get if you think about well it's all recycled so it's going up coming down and going, going through all the treatment plants and it's, it's it's coming to our home and there's more and more contaminants through whether it's just purely chlorine or farm runoff into the rivers estrogen now from the birth control pill fluoride which is a big one now which is pe- people are really getting nervous about this is the beauty of the RO system. The RO system that we install takes all that out, even the flu rag. So this is why I think the RO systems are far superior than any, any other water filter out there. Your company is called Water Hyphen Purification Dot Systems. So it's like anybody that wants more information on that, they can definitely go there to see what you're doing and what, what the system is. Water was part of your journey. You also mentioned a few other things which I'd like to talk about. Your diet, how you change that around, you change how often you were eating, you change the type of foods you were eating. Can you tell me a bit about how your diet was before you got ill, before you got the colon cancer, and then how it changed once you decided you wanted to get well? What did you do to to recover from this condition and, and feel so well these days? Previous to the diagnosis that used to go on about the way I just anything alcohol. I just didn't know anything about any foods at all. And I think when you when you're young and you're going going through all your different stages of life and being brought up in the seventies, you know what I mean, and uh, you don't really understand any any form of diet. So whatever you're like, eating is is pretty irrelevant when you're younger as, as well. Until until you get cancer, I thought I ate all right. Considered when I looked at my friends, my friends were even worse diet than what I had. But obviously, looking back now, pretty poor diet. So, but coming coming into recovery, and it took me three or four years to understand. It weren't just overnight. It took me three or four or five years to really understand that do a lot of research on food and realizing that we don't need a lot of food really to survive. I started eating less, eating more when I did eat, and having long long gaps in between, like inter- intermittent fasting type of thing. And I still do today. I don't. I have my tea at, at, at a reasonable time, five or six o'clock at night, and I will not eat until the following morning and it is now still late morning and I've still not had anything to eat since yesterday tea time. I'm getting ready to eat but I probably have probably had a litre of water already today and I'm getting I'm getting hungry now. So I've gone a long time before my last meal which were about half past five last night. So you've done a really long fast and I I guess you probably realise that in that long fast, the body kind of gets rid of waste, it rejuvenates, it recovers. Is yeah. that 
when I, when you were, you've been a researcher over those few years. Yeah, I've just noticed. Yeah. Anyway, your body knows when, she, once you start getting tuned in, tuned into your own body, you, what it needs, it, your body as well, when you, when you go longer periods without food, it is, it, your body's at peace. It doesn't stress out. It, it has time to recalibrate, let's say, get shut to toxins, your detoxes. And, and then all of a sudden, like, I'm getting hungry now. And you don't realize that. How, how can you go from, from, from the night before at tea time, back past five ish, to dinner time the following day without eating? And it's, it's not a manual of a matter thing. Once you start doing it, your body just gets into, into the mode of eating men, understanding that when you wake up is not the most important meal of the day, which is where we let it leave it is, but I disagree with that. And then going to, have something to eat when my body's telling me it's time to eat. That takes time. It takes it takes a bit of skill set to get into that process. But once you do do it and get into it, you body efficiently. It sounds fantastic. Now we're going to be talking a lot more about uh, your cancer recovery and your survival and all the things you did to get well. After a few messages from our commercial partners. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. You're listening to UK Health Radio. I'm Dora Walsh on my weekly show, Nutrition for Health, Perfect Weight and Wellbeing. I'm with Craig Driver. He's the founder of Iconic Pure Water. You can find out more about them on their website, water-purification.system. And this week, we're talking about cancer recovery and survival. Craig has an amazing story of recovery, uh, having been diagnosed with bowel cancer at 42 and still here uh, kicking and alive and kicking more than 10 years later. Craig, we were talking about the water and then we were talking about your diet and how you changed your diet. You changed the way you were eating and you were eating later in the day and finishing earlier in the day and doing this intermittent fasting to allow your body to recover overnight and also realizing that we don't need to eat as much as we think. And, and you said it takes a while to really tune into your body and realize that that's the truth. Now, how long does it take you to to get into that mode of eating and to adapt? It took me around about four to five years to understand the route I had to choose for survival and then understanding what I need to do and then doing all the research and take you along when all the jigsaw puzzles come together at the end. Changing the diet that you used to have previously to understand the and changes that you have to go through. And a lot of the time, you don't really believe a lot of things that you read or listen to. And it, t- it does take a long time. It takes a long time to understand everything to do with the food, your body, what your body needs. And it was just purely on the meat side of it as well, because that was a difficult one, because I didn't eat a lot of meat previously. And my, my meat eat, eat intake now is, 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 is far greater than what it used to be. So, so from, from that aspect is, is certainly good works for me. That's fantastic. So I know that some people, when they have cancer diagnosis, they avoid meat, but you just yeah. wanted to have it. What kind of meat are you eating these days? Every, everything on get organic grass fed beef, eggs, uh, wild elastin salmon is, is, is part of my weekly intake of, uh, of fish. And like say, not great to mouth. So I don't, I don't eat. Silly amounts are just eating up and I've got overindulge it. If, if I feel I've had enough of it and there's still food on my plate, I don't force it down. When I, when, when I feel I've had enough, I've had enough. Um, so, so many so, people would be like, like to be in your position because these days, as you mentioned, sometimes people are hungry all the time. They think they need to eat all the time. It's almost like there's an addiction and they can't stop and they're eating all day. Uh, and what you're saying is that you actually manage to stop when you're full, you're not overeating, you're not overstuffing yourself. So it sounds like the actual food you're eating is really filling you up, it's giving you the nutrition. Yeah, and it's re- reducing grit. Yeah. Have you reduced grains in your diet? Yes, it, and, we, and we, we dairy sugar, yes, definitely. Actually, down to zero now. 
when I can totally get away from sugars and dairy all the time. I'm I'm not allergic to any of them, but I know I have to decrease high levels of wheat dairy sugar and it's the three main food sources that people have problems with this to hit. Um, wheat dairy sugar is if a lot of people are allergic to it, then we've got to ask why they're allergic to it. Obviously that's not for a debate today, but I did that the year of the years and now um, wheat dairy sugar. I'd probably reduced it by ninety five percent I would say. Oh, that's fantastic. And was it hard to reduce sugar? Because sugar can be quite addictive and people will use it as a comfort food. They like to have biscuits and cake with a cup of tea. But how was that for you having to come off? Wait, wait, yeah. I, I, I don't eat between meals. I'll, I'll have water. I'll have, I'll have a, a cup of tea or a, I'll always drink plenty of water in between, but I might have a, have a cup of tea or something like that in between, but that's about it. Uh, but I don't, I don't eat anything in between foods. And on, once you reduce all them craving food substances, you, you then realize that your body doesn't need it. And it, and your body get adjusts very quickly. Once you do reduce them, the high levels of craving foods, that the craving does go out. And I think it'll only take a month or two if you, if you did reduce or stop taking them foods, the cravings do go very quickly. A lot of people can't get to that stage, can they? Because, like you say, it's comfort eating. I, I just don't eat between meals. It's as simple as that. It's fantastic. It is a recipe for health. Did your whole family follow you into this diet when you decided you were going to get well and recover from cancer? No, no. My, my, my I've got three daughters, and uh, they, they, they know the health journey I'm on. They do. They, they, they still do ask for it when they. Maybe getting a little bit overweight or eating too much. And then they've got their own lives. They know what's happened to me. They know how will it be. They know what we're eating. I try and advise them, but they've got their own minds and their own life. And I don't interfere too much. Uh, but they, they see how I eat and they know what I'm about. So it's, it's, it's down to them. But I'm, I'm sure as they start getting a little bit older, they're going to need more and more support because uh, it, as we get older, things don't regenerate the same and you can end up putting a little bit of weight on or maybe an health scare. Yeah. Um, but we know it, a lot of disease, it can be very reversed very quickly down to diet and th- various different ways of overcoming stress, or just general Outlook on life is, 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 it was a big one for me. I'm, I'm a very positive person. To be fair, I have, I've always been a very positive person, but, um, and I'm more positive now getting into my fifties, knowing that I should get into my sixties, seventies and eighties, feeling good, pain free, and still got plenty of energy. And there's no reason why none of us can do that. Even into our eighties. I totally agree, Craig. I wish more people knew this because it's almost like these days people expect to be unwell. They, and they give you a big clap if you're not on medications at age 45 or 50. It's like an achievement. To me, yes, it is an achievement, but really it should be normal for everyone that they shouldn't be on these medications or, uh, at that age. Because if you're giving your body what it needs and the body can recover, it can rejuvenate, it can regenerate. Um, yeah. and it's so good to get this message out there because we don't have to go downhill, do we? No, no. If if I know a lot of friends, if they're in pain, they've got joint problems, and it, it, this can be reversed so quickly down to diet. Um, and you've got to go to the root cause because no, there's no pills or uh, any medication. Is is just you just putting a plaster over. You're just masking the problem. You've got to get to the root cause, and the majority of the Time, they'll be dehydrated and they will be just eating inflammatory foods. Yeah. So it sounds like you're not on, on an anti inflammatory diet. Do you have a lot of uh, fruit and vegetables, multi colored fruit and vegetables in your Yeah, in the, I'm, I'm very aware of the nightshades as well, right? They really stop in, in into your body as well. So you've got to be very careful and choose wisely on, on, on all aspects of food, don't you? Even down to fruit and veg, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I do eat fruit and veg, but we still also do get a lot of goodness out of the meat I'm eating as well. 
I really agree. Now, let's talk about nightshades because they're these uh, potatoes, tomatoes, aubergines, courgettes, peppers. Yeah. And some people might see those and think, oh, lovely, this is very healthy for me. I should be eating them. But what are your thoughts on that? And, and, and what are you doing in your house journey with nightshades? Well, just go tonight. <laughs> it's very difficult because we there are food that is ready available. It's 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 a food that the fast grown, the the food to profit from. So if there's any any food source out there that's releasing toxins into your body, you've got to understand what they are, and and not put them into your body. It's simple as that. It's. And it's very difficult, isn't it? Because it's all, all the food sources now are just purely out there because they can be grown very quickly and then they can be sold very quickly. And that is a problem for me because I know that there's a lot of the food out there that I would not even touch. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good wake up call. Now for our listeners, these nightshades here, yeah, it's, it's believed that they are inflammatory. Obviously, most people, everybody benefits from an anti-inflammatory diet. So even though they seem healthy on the surface, there is a belief now in studies to, uh, indicate that they are, those kind of foods are inflammatory in origin. Um, so it's, it's an idea to look into that and then find out what works for you. Cause some people, for example, as you mentioned with joint pain, they wouldn't do well on nightshades because that's going to really inflame the condition. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah you've learned so much about nutrition, not having been a nutritionist so much. What else do you do? Because you mentioned stress management as well and your mindset and being positive. You said you were always positive, but now you're even more positive. Do you do meditation? Do you exercise? What is your lifestyle like? Well, I play golf. That's, oh, great. that's, that, that's one thing that I, I, it, it was quite a passion over, over my time. I haven't played quite as much recently because of concentrating on the business, but I do plan to do more this year, play more this year. And, and also, I, I let go of things very quickly and anything that happens personally or business or but even if it's down to bumping your car, it's, I'm a great, it is what it is. Let's deal, there's no point worrying about that. Let, let's deal with moving forward with all the issues we have. Whether it's like I said, maybe it's bumping your car or a family debate or a feud or everything can be dealt with and sorted out. There's nothing, there's no point worrying about the past. It is what it is. Let's move on. Let's get a solution and move forward. Sounds like you're not letting life weigh you down. You let things go, and that keeps you light. Yeah, yeah, it does. And uh, I just, I just enjoy life. I just, we're always having a, a good time. We're always, even people I work with, we're we're always having a good laugh, and it, it's it's just it's just life's good. It is so important to laugh because we know now how uh, happiness and love. They're fun. It all impacts your immune system. So it is one of the recipes for recovery and survival, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And even when I was, I, I was, I was in a lot of pain after surgery, all the infections and everything. But I, I still, I was, I was still happy. I was still cracking the jaw, on me and so on. And not a lot of people. I suppose a lot of people can't do that, but. I think, I think when you're on a journey of, it, it, it is what it is, and let's just make the best of it while we're, well and while we're in the situation. And, and I know a lot of people don't have that ability sometimes because they're always really down and they, nothing, they, they don't think they've anything to be happy about, but sometimes you need a life changing, changing experience, don't you, to maybe overcome that and realize that we're well, very lucky to be on this planet and while, while we're here. Let's understand. Let's let's understand why we're here. Let's understand we should be enjoying life. We should be enjoying every aspect aspect of life. It's like me you now. I, I try and get away now every every most weekends just to try and get away from the normal day to day and just getting out in nature um, and just being away and just making the soul 
settle from your from your really chaotic week. Um, and just just if you want, just any note. Even the medication is very good for it. And meditation, sorry, is good for a lot of people. And what whatever works for you, really. It sounds like you've done so much, but it sounds like you had a good mindset from the beginning. Were you ever scared when you had this diagnosis or when you were having this treatment? Because I do think it is a pretty scary time, even if you do have a good mindset. It is, but I was just, I just wanted to get on with it. I've got bowel cancer. The, the acting removes a most of my larger bowel. Um, I had um, a tumor on the right flexure. So, and it was just a matter of it's got to be taken out. Let's get on with it. Let's get it done. Um, and it worried. It was never really a worry, worry for me. I just, I just wanted it out and, and, let, and let's see what the next day is going to bring. And it worried. It was that. That was the attitude, really, which I know like is. Most people probably can't do that, but it's, you've got to deal with it. Yes, it, it, especially when you, when life, life or death is staring at, at, staring you in the face, but it's, it's very difficult to explain because until you're in that position, it's, it, it's, it's surreal. It's very strange, but I just said to myself, get surgery, let's get on with it. And that was my attitude. It's a good attitude. Now, what, once you'd had the surgery and then you had that first round of chemo and then you decided to go on your own health journey and get yourself better, what did the people around you think about that? Were they supportive in your decisions? Yeah, yeah. My me, me, me wife was, yes. She was there every step of the way. My children were, were there if we needed them. There wasn't much help for information from me. The NHS, because they're not going to tell you anything about else. All they want to do is you just sign for 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 checkups, and and they can't give you any information. They, in fact, they they don't really know either. You, you've got to find out a solution for yourself, and you've got to be open minded to every every aspect of what people or your research is trying to tell you, and. It's unlocking it all, but you do realise in, in, at the end when all the jigsaw puzzles do fit together, you sort of been lied to about, I, I felt I'd been lied to about food. And my, when, when you understand how, how we have got to, to, to today yeah. with, with the way we live and with food and lifestyle, it is that you realise very quickly that no wonder I was ill. No, you look back and you say, no wonder I was ill with, with the intake of food and pot and well, just, just de- dreadful diet. So, uh, I think, unfortunately, they don't teach us so much about nutrition in this country when we're growing up. And uh, there's a lot of junk food advertising. It's just normal to have a lot of puddings and fizzy drinks. And really, if if we knew more about this when we were young, we were educated on how to eat, either from our parents or from the schools, then we wouldn't really be developing these conditions as much as we see today. No, you know, we, we've, we've certainly got a, a, nation, a far weaker nation than what we had 50, 50 years ago, I, I do believe. And I, I, I see it all around me. Even the males, are very, they're very weak to what they used to be. And things have changed so much this last 30, 40 years. It's the, the lifestyles are unrecognizable to us. When I, when I were a child, just this, this, it's been a massive change around in the way we do things. But as, as, as young, as a young lad, we, all we wanted to do was be outside playing, playing, or swimming in the canal, um, swimming in the lodges. Uh, making go karts. So that's that's what we did. We built our bodies up from a very very young age, and we were we, back time we were in our teens. We were already a very 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 strong individuals, and getting into your teens, you're even stronger. It, that's not there anymore, is it? No, it's like the people are just sitting at home watching TV or playing computer games or on their iPhones or their iPad. 
not getting enough good quality daylight, not moving around, not being allowed out because yeah. it's people on the streets these days, it's not, it doesn't seem safe like it used to be. Or maybe it was unsafe when we were young, but we just didn't know about it. But it, this has, as you mentioned, an impact on people's bodies. They're not building up that strength. We know they're not going to be getting their vitamins, and we know they're being exposed to all of these harmful frequencies as well, which yeah. are not good for health. Yeah, they're not, and it, it's, it's quite a concern, isn't it, Dora, to think that like, even down to me own children and my grandchildren, they're, they're subjected to this kind of lifestyle that we've all accepted, really, because... There were no way nobody going to keep me in when I was at, when I was young. You know what I mean, I was a free spirit and I wanted to play out. I wanted to be with my friends, hang out all the time, run around, play, fight. And we were always, I can remember just running, wherever we went, we were just running, running all the time. And it, and it just, it's just a strange place to, to look back to where I was then as a child to look back. It's, it's, it's a different world. Yeah, you're right. Now, we're going to be talking a lot more about this in a minute after a few messages from the commercial partners. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. The station that makes you feel good. You're listening to Dora Walsh on UK Health Radio on my weekly show, Nutrition for Health, Perfect Weight and Wellbeing. I'm talking with Craig Driver. He's got an amazing story of cancer recovery and survival. He's here with us this week. His website is water-purification.systems and he is the founder of Iconic Pure Water and they sell these wonderful water purification systems and also EMF protection devices. Now, Craig, we did talk about kids being out when you were growing up in the 70s, being able to play out in the canal, swimming, running, being in the sunshine, fresh air and, and how this is changing this, these days. And, and I mentioned we are exposed to more frequencies now. People like are stuck on their smartphones or they're watching TV all the time or they have the Wi-Fi on. They might have a, a, these wireless devices in their house. Now, by the sounds of it, on your health journey, you learned about that and, and you've kind of found a way to protect yourself. Can you tell us a bit more about that and the, the impacts of EMFs on our health and, and how you found out about it and, and use this understanding to help yourself in your own health journey. Yeah, I I learned but under the archway really. I was I was working in foods and uh, it was like a tin shed really. It was all corrugated metal sheets and the even corrugated metal tin sheets and every time I went in or in there for a period of time I used to get an idiot. And un- unknown to me, there was actually a Wi-Fi router under the table. And I didn't put two and two together at first until until the box, it stopped working, the Wi-Fi box stopped working. And then I realised that, oh, there's been an edit to that. And then um, the days went on and it, this, this Wi-Fi module hadn't been replaced and I didn't get an headache, headache again. And I sort of then put two and two together, and then it, then about two weeks later, it was then a new a new one had been put in, and I started getting headaches again. So that's when I knew exposure to it, to the EMFs of Wi-Fi was actually giving me an headache, which is why I decided to look further into it, into it really. <laughs> and this this was probably about five six years ago, and then realised I need some form of protection, so. One of the things I did do is I'd wire up my house, so my skybox, me, me computer, everything I had that need, needed Wi-Fi, I hardwired it, and so I didn't need the Wi-Fi on anymore. So I switched my Wi-Fi off at my house, 
Uh, but an iPad that is a cellular iPad, so it uses its own SIM card. So when I mean, I'm not using that, I just switch it off. And so I live in a lot. Everything's Wi-Fi enabled and we're being bombarded every from every angle with, with Wi-Fi signals and, and EMFs. So I then looked into devices to protect you even further when you're on the go, uh, on the move, and in your own environment, in your own and your own business workspace. So then um, I'm a UK distributor for some EMF protection products and water structuring products, which is on my website as well. So that website is water-impurification.systems. And, and basically, your message was that you, you realized that it was affecting you. You looked into it. So therefore, you got rid of the Wi-Fi in your home. A lot of people, yes. oh, how can I do that? I basically, Craig, I've done the same. So it sounds you're basically just running everything off the Ethernet cables. Is that right? Yes, yes, everything off the Ethernet. And like I said, if, if I need my if I'm using my iPad, I'll just use it on a cellular basis, but away from my body. And when I'm not using it, I'll, sw- I'll switch it off. What does that mean, of using it on a cellular basis? Cellular, it's got its SIM card, so it's like a, a big mobile phone, really. So it uses it uses a mobile phone signal, so you can use it. So obviously, my Wi-Fi is disabled on on the iPad, Bluetooth disabled, and so I just try and switch as much things off as possible. When I go to bed, I, I my my phone is left it downstairs, out of the way. I don't take my phone to bed. So it's, there's, there's things that are viable and, and when I'm asleep at night, I want as much good sleep, deep sleep and, and, and not have any, anybody who is going to break my sleep pattern unless it's an emergency, which then they can ring the, the, the long line if they need to do. We don't even have any cordless phones. We just have one phone downstairs, which is quite loud if somebody wants to get a hold of us. And that's that's the way I live. It's wonderful. Uh, yeah, I, I wish we more people knew about this. But obviously, people are waking up to healthy eating and clean water, healthy water, structured water. But I think this is the next thing: people really realizing that these Wi-Fi frequencies, these mobile phone frequencies, do have an impact on our health. We are electromagnetic in nature, and when we come into contact with that, it has an effect on our cells. You can read up on it. So I'm, I'm totally with you. I hope we more people will find out more about it. If, if they want when people struggling at night to sleep, just, just turn the lights and get off, get off your, get off your phone, get off your computer. Just start getting ready for a good night's sleep. Get sure to go with blue lights and all your, your LED lights in your room or try, try and you want to get ready for sleep in, in dim light. And it, 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 it doesn't take a lot to get your body to, harmonize the way it was designed to do yeah definitely now if they could want more information on those emf products can they get that on your website yeah yeah feel free to call the number on, on the website to yes fantastic so that's water hyphen purification dot systems you you mentioned that those devices that you have the emf protection devices uh, also can be used to structure water, which you say it's healthier to structure water. How does that work? What do you do to it? Well, all you all you do to structure the water, like I said, we 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 get it. We get the filter water from mice, then we put the goodness back in, as we discussed earlier. And then all you have to do is make sure you put it in a glass bottle, and then you put the glass bottle within. 30 to 50 centimetres of this device and it structures the water. But the same, the same device actually harmonises your, your living space. So it mitigates the harmful effects of the EMFs, etc. It harmonises your space. What kind of uh, feedback are you getting from your customers on these EMF protection devices and, and, and the impact on their health and their well-being? Some, some people are, I would say 50, 50, 50, 50 of my life. Feel the benefit. They can feel the form. A lot of people aren't sensitive to EMF, so they don't feel it much. But they just go off the 
they know that it protects you. We, we, it's got all the test certificates for it. They know it's structured water. And then they just go off that. They know they need structured water. So with the backing of, of, of the certification of the products and what it does, um, I advise that we need structured water. The, this is where, uh, this, these are the reasons why we've got videos that we send out to people to understand it better. Um, and people are really enjoying the products. And you can tell it, 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 it does change the, the world too, because once it's been in, in, in the vicinity of the um, water structure and device, it changes the taste of the water. So it's doing something to the water. Oh, uh, that's really. But it has, it has got the test to show it, our, our water before being next to the, and the device to after being 13 minutes it, at side of the device and the, how, it, how the water is then structured. They've got the test, the test results are there. So it's been, but people are, you know, once, once people you show this people that it is structured water, this is what it does. These are the tests, what they've done on, on the product. Then, then that's fine. They're happy with that. Fantastic. Well, it's been absolutely inspirational to talk to you this week on UK Health Radio about your recovery from cancer, how you're surviving and you're feeling so well. I'm sure our listeners have really enjoyed learning from you, finding out about your story and what you've done to reach that amazing level of health. And uh, for listeners today, I really hope you've enjoyed listening uh, to our show this week on UK Health Radio as much as I've enjoyed presenting the show. And uh, definitely uh, check us out again next week here on UK Health Radio. Until then, goodbye.